Lake Agassiz, as it grew, it became the biggest freshwater lake on the planet. It doesn't exist anymore. You can still see the flat floor of Lake Agassiz that forms the watershed of the Red River flowing to the north. Um, it's a very clay lake plain. So if you've been to northwestern Minnesota, northeastern North Dakota, you know what that's like. Kind of flat. You see, if you're flying into some cities in Saskatchewan, you feel like you see the curvature of the earth. It's so flat. So it's a it's an enormous glacial, proglacial lake is what we call it. Um, bigger than all the Great Lakes combined in area. So the dam that was holding in the lake was just a low moraine, a glacial moraine, that was actually in the Ortonville area, Bigstone County. And you could look at that landscape now and you don't see anything very high. It might have been slightly higher because Glacial moraines often have a little bit of glacial ice still in them, and it could be that the melting of that ice caused the sudden failure of the southern part of the basin. Um, might just have been a gradual erosion, but the dam is just a natural low moraine that formed uh, in front of the ice slope as it was retreating to the north. So Lake Agassiz existed for thousands of years, and the, the outlet, which we refer to as Glacial River Warren, the southern outlet, was one of three outlets that operated during the, the history of this lake. Others went to the Arctic to the northwest and out through the Great Lakes um, in the emptying into Lake Superior by Thunder Bay. But for most of the existence of the lake, River Warren was the outlet for the meltwater.